everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to Teacher World 2019. Thank you so much for being here with me guys. I am going to be going over um, Blastophalon GX which has definitely taken a backseat in terms of fire type Pokemon considered in the metagame. Um, even its non-GX counterpart is being, um, uh, is being considered a better deck than the GX version and obviously um, Reshis are and not definitely um, in the spotlight. However, I do believe Plus Evelyn still has some merit purely because um, Welder obviously works with it. One of the big issues you had is that maybe you ran out of steam if your opponent was able to play around the B-string turn or um, <clears throat> they weren't activating it, but Pigram was its main enemy and it seems to be going down in popularity obviously all the water types being played now um do, do mean that blastephalon has to be very careful uh, between slow king and dugong but i do believe that against gx decks against big gx decks this deck still has a lot of potential so you have blastephalon gx 180 hp 8 an ultra beast therefore b string works with it it has the first attack bursting burn warrior points active pokemon is now burned and confused and then we have the Mind Blown attack, which deals 50 damage times the amount of fire energy you decide to send to the Lost Zone. Um, of course, we have Beast, um, Beast Ring, and Naganadel with its ability in order to repower up and get more energy into play, which you can then use to get KOs. Now, Burst GX does allow you to discard a prize card, essentially taking it, but if it is an energy, you do get to attach that price card or that energy to any Pokemon you want. Now we have a full full 4-4 Nagadal line <clears throat> for the charging up ability. You may attach a basic energy card from the discard pile to this Pokemon. Very nicely combined with um, Blast Evelyn and all the discarding effects that we do have. And Turning Point also deals a very solid 80 damage for 3 energy. But if we have exactly 3 price cards remaining, this attack actually does 80 more damage. So not a bad, um, not a bad attack in by any means. Now we do have the Ditto Prism Star along with the one Grimer and one Alolan Mog. Since otherwise Zapdos decks do give us a lot of trouble, they still do anyways, but um, we do need the Mog in order to have a chance against them. Four Lily, four Welder, two Cynthia and three Guzma round out the supporters. Of course, Welder is the newest um, friend for Blacephalon, which does allow us to have more room to maneuver, even on turns where we don't have P-String available. Now, 4 Ultra Ball and 4 Mysterious Treasure for maximum consistency, along with 4 P-Strings to make sure that we can find them at the right time. A single energy switch can be very useful, especially in the late game. 1 Hit Factory to keep drawing cards, and then 1 Ultra Space to search for the Ultra Beast we want. So, let's give this deck a try in the ladder. Let's see if we can do something with it and I do believe as you can see I still it feels like I have the flu or a cold more like it a cold um, so my throat is still a bit sore um, so yeah I'm definitely gonna take that as a sign that I need to um, take a break I have been traveling quite a lot this past few months and a um, very nice way to finish all my travels with a regional win over in Sao Paulo. I do believe I've already hit my best finish limit of um, 8. I actually have 10 total tournaments in which I um, I, I guess I didn't mention Turtonator. Turtonator is also a really nice attacker when combined with Nagnadel. Um, so yeah, I am pretty... Pretty happy to have traveled so much. It definitely paid off. I got like um, a close to a thousand championship points within the span of three months, so not a bad deal at all. Um, we are up against Reshi's Heart, which is pretty nice because I do believe that is a matchup that might be favorable for us. Yeah. Might be favorable for us. Um, we are going to see a Fire Flint, probably going to see a Welder, therefore. Uh, but anyways, I won't be going to Madison, unfortunately. I was uh, planning on it, but I'm pretty tired of all the travel. Um, I'm happy to take a break until NAIC happens. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. We'll see 
We'll see what happens. Yeah, two big tournaments to play for, two big trophies still to be won at NAIC and Worlds. Obviously, my goal is to win both of them. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'll keep preparing. And with no more travel, um, that's a pretty nice card to get here. With no more travel, um, should be in, uh, probably should have attached to the active and then energy switched. Uh, with no more travel, I should have way, way, way more time in order to um, to make videos, to <clears throat> to stream. Yeah, although coaching has been super, super busy lately. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna let loose purely because I need a fresh hand. This hand currently sucks. My Lily was also very underwhelming, right? And then the Ultra Space is nice because then I can set up a Blastephalon here. Um, I probably definitely won't be able to attack with it next turn, but that is fine. I'm not in any rush. Um, unless I top the gate fire and then off of the Welder I get like a really good combination of cards. Probably won't be able to attack with it, but that is okay. Double Custom Gatcher would be bad for us. Um, Although it would activate B-String, so perhaps it wouldn't be terrible, actually. Um, my opponent might be considering doing that with a Greens in her hand. We have seen no indication about this being anything other than the Greens variant of Reshizard, right? That should be what we are currently up against. Did use Ultra Space. She was looking through her deck, figuring out price cards, figuring out whatever else. Um, the Volcanian, I feel like it's a bit wasted. There's no need. Um, won't be too impactful. And I still feel like we're in an okay spot. Um, we are going to see a switch, surprisingly. And then a Guzma. See another Volcanian bench, we see an energy attachment, and we're gonna see the flare starter. So my opponent trying to um, buy some time realizes that if he start if she starts attacking, she probably won't do much right there. Um, this does give us more time to just outright stabilize. I don't need mock, so I'm just gonna evolve the Ditto here, and I'll go ahead and Cynthia find ourselves a much better hand, which this definitely is a much better hand. I will go ahead and bench the boy ball. I will go ahead and attach the beast energy right here, and then I'll pass. My turgenator should be going down this turn, which is completely fine by me. Um, the Kukui doesn't make a difference in the maths. My opponent already had the knockout. And yeah, there's a high heat blast. I'm completely okay with this, because the welder is just gonna do its magic right here. You're about to see that. Um, okay, so Ultra Space for Blacephalon, right? The other one is Prize, so that's not great, but as long as we have two, we should be okay. I'm going to Welder onto Blacephalon, draw three extra cards, all the energy currently. Um, and then, I mean, I do have B-String. So this should be okay. The glitch with the energy is super annoying, right? Super, super annoying. Um, I'll go ahead and do this. That is 130 damage. So we trade one price for two, right? But then this guy comes up and then we get um, three prizes, right? Between B-String and the energy attachment and the Nagnadel recovering. We should be able to pull this off. Um, <clears throat> so, I feel like this is an okay trade, and then if we manage to find a Guzma, we might even be able to close out the game, but what it seems like is going to happen is that my opponent will not be able to um, deactivate B-String, right, immediately, or he might, actually, she might, after seeing this, she might just... Um, greens from our reshes are attached to it, and then she'll be ready to weld her next turn. Um, but I'm not too worried because she's not too far ahead in the price counts, right? She's really not too far ahead in the price counts. And there's the greens. I would expect a nest ball and a welder off of this, 
in order to search for the Reshisard. Yep, exactly what it is. A welder and a nest ball preparing for next turn. I don't mind this at all. So the question is, do you flirt strike this turn? I imagine you do, right? Um, now one important thing, however, is we are definitely going to need to get the Blastephalon off of these three prizes, right? Um, we are definitely going to need the Blastephalon off of these three prizes coming up here because we know it is prized. Right? And that means I'm gonna re be relying a lot on the welder in order to be able to pull off back-to-back -back chaos. So I will go ahead and do this. And I'll go ahead and attach. And then I will go ahead and Cynthia. Well, I'm getting KO'd anyway, so why not bench the boy ball? Yeah. And then there's the Cynthia. <clears throat> wow, no fires. Jeez. Wow, what a hand. Um, no fires. This is a big problem. This is actually a very big problem. Uh, uh, uh. Four fires left. I grab the Lele, I can't bench it. So probably playing that point goal will end up costing me. Um, energy switch. I basically rely on top decking, energy switch, and a welder. Yep. I feel like there's only one fire, that's so bad. I need more fires. I need more fires in play. But yeah, to say we're in trouble would be an understatement because we also have to get rid of six energy. One, two, three, four, five, six. In order to get this KO, and then we need another six to KO this Reshis Hard, which is obviously not great. So yeah, the energy cost is just way, way, way too high. We get a fire and we get Lily. So we don't get our last plus Ephelon. That is going to be game. If I had a bench plus Ephelon, if I had been able to attach to it, Maybe we would have had a shot, depending on what we drew. Um, but yeah, not with what happened right there. Okay, so perhaps Welder isn't enough to carry this deck through. Um, even though it is super cost effective to KO GX's tag teams, um, just the back-to-back -back attacks is really, really difficult to deal with. So we do win the coin flip, we are going first, that is going to make a big, big difference. Starting Blasephalon instead of Turtonator is also going to make a big, big difference. Maybe my mistake the previous game was just going all in on the Blasephalon attack rather than being patient. Maybe that was my mistake. Um, okay, so double Zorwa, right? Double Zorua is interesting here. <clears throat> I will go ahead and search for a Blacephalon. I will go ahead and Mysterious Treasure away the Lele. Not ideal, but not the worst either. I still have Marsh Shadow in case I need to draw extra cards, and I do have 10 total draw supporters, so we should be okay ish. Um, yeah, this is actually looking pretty nice. I will go ahead and bench the Poipo, and then I'll attach. And I will pass. So not a bad start by any means. Not a bad start at all. Um, you have to assume that Zoark will be playing a water type partner, right? Not necessarily. Um, not necessarily. Okay, so interesting that we didn't see any sort of um, 
any sort of water type search here or establishing um, I will go ahead and grab a Nagnatel, just stealing the deck here. I do want to keep the bench space open, I guess. So I'm just going to go ahead and Cynthia here. I do find more fires, but I am running into this, right? Like, I'm not able to find... I'm not able to find both a way to discard energy and an energy. So I'm going to go ahead and burst GX. Not a prize card, actually. A Guzma, which is not ideal. Okay, so there's the first Zork. There's the first trade. So yeah, we're gonna see Nest Ball. Are we going to see a water type established now? There is a fighting energy in play, so maybe my opponent just doesn't play any. No, there it is. There's the slowpoke. So a combination of Persian, fighting types, and slowpoke, which makes sense um, without... Without... Um, without, without... I don't know. Without a choice band, as long as I remove the energy from the Velocephalon, he won't be able to knock me out in one hit. Um, so I have a pretty sweet setup, it's just I'm missing the energy in the discard pile, and it's not looking like I'm gonna get them anytime soon. So the Welder also hasn't been doing much. Um, there's a the Mallow, there's a the Trade. If I had energy in the discard pile, then I might even be able to just KO the Zork right here, but. Not looking like that will be possible. DLT damage more than enough. There's a fire. Right? <clears throat> so, if I welder and attach, I still need two more fires. Right? So, I would need to find two fires and a way to discard them. Or at least one of them specifically. Therefore, I feel like my chances of pulling that off are high with the Lily. Uh, yikes. This is really not great. How many energy do I even have priced? One, two, three. I have two fires priced. I have... Okay, that explains. I have two Ultra Balls priced as well. So I can see how that severely decreases the odds of me pulling that off. Um, I generally think Welder is correct. No, I think it's Lily. I don't think I'm gonna get this KO anyways. Yeah. I can't seem to get... I can't seem to get both cards, right? Either I get energy or I get a way to discard them, but I can't get both. And then, I mean, the confusion does force a discard of a DC, which I'm okay with. We do see the trade happening immediately. The Marsh Shadow at Match Amp GX. Okay. There's the Persian. And we do see a Guzma to KO the clean plus Eflon. So my opponent ends up taking the first two prizes and activates my B string. 
Um. Okay, so how am I going to do this? I could go Guzma kill the Persian, right? That does mean I won't have one Guzma is gone, and oh no, never mind, my Lele is gone. So I should just KO with Magnadel here, right? That should be what I do. And that will be what I will do. So I'm gonna Ultra Space for Blacephalon. That Welder top deck is just really, really awful. I'm gonna go ahead and evolve. So four Magnadels in play. I will go ahead and B-String onto the active. And then I will go ahead and Mysterious Treasure away a Welder just to thin <clears throat> and then I will go ahead and Lily jeez what on earth is happening I can't draw energy for the life of me okay so turning point does get the knockout and then I might still be able to get another turn of B string jeez I mean my next turn if my Nagnadel goes down, <coughs> my next turn might just be toss everything and let loose and then hope for the best. One, two, three, only four Pokemon that discard pile, so currently at 9120 damage. Currently at 120 damage. There's um, 140, 140 damage. It just has the Guzma just outright has the Guzma raw before even finishes its, his trades so now we rely on the welder in order to be able to get this KO and then even if we do manage that my opponent has the Persian to just go for triple plus choice band so it's really not looking great here. It's really not looking great. And I just, I can't find energy this game. I can't. I cannot find energy this game. There was no way I was ever going to be able to attack with Turtonator. So then I'll do this. And then I'll grab this. And then I'll Ultra Ball. <coughs> my deck is 16 cards <coughs> of which 7 are energy 7 of them are energy I am about to get all the energies here off of these 4 cards aren't I yep double B string double energies <laughs> what a joke um, so I can keep 1 energy on my active and then, in case my opponent doesn't have another choice band, which I definitely think he does, or he will have, um, not much I can do about this, right? Literally nothing else I can do. And then, even if he doesn't get the KO for whatever reason, um, all he needs to do is... Like, I would still need a Guzma. <laughs> I would still need a Guzma to get a KO here, so or to end up winning the game. So, definitely not looking... Great at all, the deck is not, it's just not good. Or he can just KO me with the Persian. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That will be enough. And obviously my opponent has DC and triple acceleration. So I'm just going to go ahead and concede. Um, okay, after seeing this deck, I mean, pricing level of Cephalon is... A sign that maybe you want a fourth one. Um, like it's definitely an argument that you want a fourth one. I don't think with all the water type techs being played like Sloking, like Dugong, um, you are going to have a really hard time against that. What used to be a really good Zork matchup for you, now it seems to be really bad because they have non-GX attackers to KO your GX attackers. So that's really sad. And yeah. I think that's going to be it for this deck, um, I don't feel like exploring it more is worth it, it just doesn't seem that great at this point. It's definitely a very inferior deck in terms of raw power like Precious Art, and it requires way too much setup.
yeah so that will be it for the video guys thanks so much for watching don't forget to leave a like and tomorrow we'll be featuring the dwarf seal valley which will hopefully provide much better results thank you so much and until next time bye bye